Good morning. Good morning. I welcome all of you this glorious, bright summer day. Just a few announcements to draw your attention to. Next Sunday, which is also Father's Day, but the Fellowship and Growth Committee will be hosting a walk with um, the congregation for anybody who would like to meet um, outside of the Arboretum and we will go as a group, a congregation, um, and we are doing that at 7 p.m. So bring your dads with you and come and walk together in one of the most beautiful spaces in Reno, Nevada. Also, sometime this week, the uh, Valley Harpers virtual concert that was taped earlier this spring will be put up on our website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. We are not quite sure what day that will be posted, so uh, just kind of keep your eyes open, check it periodically, and um, our admin will send out a notice to the congregation to let you all know when it actually does become um, posted virtually. Also July, 24th is once again the Gay Pride Parade. We were not able to have a parade last year, let alone take part in a parade or a information booth. Both opportunities will be available and there will be sign-up sheets um, out in the Narthex area within the next couple of weeks for those who would like to march in the parade representing the church or staff the booth, the information booth, representing our church as well. Um, I believe that's it for our announcements this morning. Yeah. If now, if you would take a few moments to please pass the peace to those who are seated seated in your pew, or in front or behind you, um, please remain seated during this <laughs> during this time. Good morning again, everyone. Please join us all together in the call to worship in our bulletin. We think we must do great things to change the world around us. Know that great changes come about because of our smallest efforts. A few minutes of shared time. A moment of compassion.
let us bring our hearts and minds together in this prayer of invocation. Creator God, we recommit ourselves to the hope that your realm will win out in the struggle for justice and peace and engender fullness of life and vitality in our world community. Amen. Readings from the Word of God come from two books. First, the Old Testament, Ezekiel, and second, the New Testament, Gospel of Mark. So, first, from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. And from Mark. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. May the word of the Lord Fill our hearts, nourish us, and guide us that we may be more worthy and profitable servants in God's sight. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Joanna, and worship singers this morning. We are hoping and we are praying that we will get better guidance from the CDC on when we as a congregation can sing together. Hopefully, it will be sooner rather than later, but we will keep you posted on a weekly basis on when we, who may not be as gifted as Joanna, but still love to sing and praise God through the raising of our voices. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day. Amen. Do you remember in elementary school, we would plant a bean seed in a little paper cup filled with soil, and then we'd wait a few days and watch. A seed pushed with tiny fingers into dark ground and poof, like magic, it turned into something green, something thriving and mysterious. It was like a random miracle. This random, mysterious nature of a seed is part of what Mark wants to get at with his comparison to the kingdom of God. A seed 
once planted, is a mystery being revealed. It unfolds by its own volition, in its own time, in the soil. Planters may sleep and rise, but a seed's work is inevitable. The preset sequence of a seed first sprouting, showing a head, and then yielding a seed is a beautiful image of how divine transformation happens. The emergence of the seed and its sequenced growth is like the reign of God because it is beyond our control. It appears of its own accord on its own timetable, not yours or mine, just like God's divine reign is also inevitable and on a divine timetable that is beyond our control. And the seed metaphors just keep coming this morning. The mustard seed parable seeks to illustrate the mystery of the kingdom of God further. The tiny mustard seed mysteriously grows and spreads all of a sudden. Mustard seeds have the beautiful quality of being small. But once they grow, they can spread and take over an entire field. The mustard plant is short and scruffy and small, but it also sprawls and is sufficient for shade for small animals, just like the mysterious reign of God, which grows exponentially enough so that we, too, can find shade in its influence. And this is where these parables meet us and their vision of growth. Even more so if we are optimistic moderns, we find hope in the seed's own inevitable path of growth. And people like Theodore Parker and Martin Luther King Jr. and even Barack Obama agree. All whom have repeated the hope-filled statement the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Whatever the reign of God is, it is indeed like a seed that grounds our hope in the eventuality that things can change. And the moral universe has a bending arc to point us toward that change. That kind of hope can get us through difficult times. And so even Jesus' seedy kingdom sounds good enough to people like us. And we persist even in the darkest of times, even when it doesn't look like that arc is bending in the right direction. The strangest part of these parables is that Mark was written close to the destruction of the temple in 70 CE. The 70 CE world was a time of public chaos, extreme violence and oppression. And in such a context, the seed as a parable for the reign of God seems oddly disconnected with reality and the people's suffering in the midst of that chaos. How did Sarah Palin put it during the tea party heyday? How's that hopey, changey stuff working out? A seed seems nice enough, but may not be much good in the midst of the ruin and social chaos. Our present situation raises the same questions for seedy kingdom hope, especially the mustard variety. Mere months ago, the court testimony of the sidewalk bypassers of the George Floyd killing seemed empty of hope. 
in their cell phone videos, we could see them. The EMT, the youth, the martial arts expert, and the convenience store cashier lined up, pleading with the white policeman kneeling on a black man's neck to stop and render assistance to George Floyd. As we watched their videos, it seemed even to the bypassers themselves that all they could do from the sidewalk was cry out and plead, but change nothing. One young woman on the sidewalk even testified in court how she apologizes over and over to George Floyd every night. She asked herself whether she could have done something more. And why did her pleading or their yelling not suffice? Her haunting words make these little seed parables hard to hear. What about the seedy hope of an inevitable reign of God can survive her tearful testimony. And then came the verdict on April 20th. As many said, while justice did not come that day, accountability did. And as the lead prosecutor put it, the bystanders were a bouquet of humanity. The very people who cried out from the sidewalk and made videos with their smartphones were a surprise blooming of what it means to be human. The bystanders were not able to save George Floyd's life, but they were a mysterious, living, testifying bouquet of humanity. And in a moment, our view of these little seed parables changes a bit. What they offer now is a glimpse of change, a germination that blooms on a cracked sidewalk at 38th and Chicago. And then a generous young couple that had been secretly stuffing money into diaper boxes and under formula cans at local targets in order to help struggling families hits the news. When they had their first child, they realized just how expensive raising a family can be. Times were tough and they struggled to provide for their little one. Well, this couple is now in a better place financially. They can afford to give back to others. So they've begun stuffing about $1,000 so far in cash into various baby supplies around Los Angeles Target stores. And they're not stopping anytime soon. As they've stated, we recall how hard it was for us as new parents to afford some of the basics. And we can only imagine how difficult it must be during this pandemic. A bouquet of humanity blooming in unexpected places through loving acts of generous people. Now these occasions are something we can lay hold of. There is an arc of the moral universe that born, bends toward justice that is both a promise and a goal. And this famous quote uses the non-specific bend, but there's no one who says that we can't lay hold of that ark and in the name of the promise, bend it a little bit ourselves with specific actions of humanity. For we are people who even now glimpse emerging seeds yielding bouquets of humanity, small sprouts, of righteousness springing up, a surprising, sudden, fragile yield of the reign of God's mysterious grace and justice pushing through the hard ground of indifference and division. Let us 
be part of that bouquet. Amen. As we prepare to come before God in prayer, I lift up those who are in need of our prayers for healing and hope. Continue to pray for Carol as she prepares for very serious surgery in the near future. Surround her with prayers of support and strength and hope. I also lift up Eric who also will be undergoing both a procedure and surgery in the near future. Surround him as well with prayers of hope and healing. And also Helen, who will be having surgery tomorrow. Please surround Helen with your prayers for healing and strength and wholeness. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, you have created a world where justice and grace should be the norm, but are not. And yet we, like that little seed, do not give up hope, knowing that even with our small actions, we can be part of the solution and not the problem by continuing to help bend that arc of the moral universe toward justice. And so today we ask that you give us the strength to do this, to stand when it is difficult, to speak out when it would be easier to stay silent, to stand with when we would rather ignore. Through the power of your presence and your Holy Spirit, O oh God, send us forth from this gathering a strengthened people committed to working toward justice and peace. O oh God, hear us now as we raise to you our silent petitions. Prayers for ourselves and for others. We lift all of these prayers to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. reminder that you are encouraged to continue the community that has been developed and strengthened here today by greeting and speaking with each other in the parking lot in whatever way seems comfortable to you whether that is a handshake a fist bump an elbow bump or a hug <laughs> and now may the hope of Jesus and the love of God and the courage of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.